Hello everybody, doing some more work on the Rustin Hornsby 7XHR. In the background here I've got some uh, mechanical lubricator parts. Uh, that is on its way going back together. But in front of us here today, front and center, is the air start mechanism. I'm going to be working on that today. It's composed of what seems like two main components. There's a, a timed air inlet valve and I'm not entirely sure how this works but we'll figure out when it goes on the engine we're also going to take it apart to see make sure all the internals are working which they're probably not so we'll have to fix whatever uh, isn't functional but anyway the camshaft which is right here one of these cams I'm not sure which uh, addresses that little valve so as the cam comes around, it'll hit this valve and open it and allow air to go through, I believe. And then it delivers it through this pipe, and this goes into the cylinder head. The part that I don't really understand is there's this other, kind of what looks like a valve here. But as you screw it in, you might be able to see it's actually opening this valve. And then you can manually open and close it. So I, I don't know why you would want to hold that valve open. I would think the air pressure would open it. Then once there's combustion pressure, it's going to seat that valve. So let's take it apart, see what it looks like on the inside, and go from there. So inside the mechanism, there's two poppet valves, basically. This is the air intake. And here's the first valve. And it's just free to open and close on its own. There's no spring or anything. And in here, which is uh, what, what mates up to it, see there's a little uh, peg sticking out. I imagine that's a, a travel stop so this valve can't go too far in. And that's it. Air pressure coming in, coming in here pushes the valve against its seat and keeps it closed until the cam, as it comes around, forces the valve open. Once the valve opens, the air travels through here, goes in through here, and then out this valve into the, into the cylinder, and it'll turn the engine over. And the other thing I find strange, maybe somebody can chime in here, is the very little amount that I've worked on this engine so far, I've been impressed by both the ruggedness and the heavy-duty uh, aspects of this engine, but also the sheer unneeded excess, and there's a, a, a real strange balance of high-quality machining and really rough machining. Like, for example, the lubricator is very nicely built, but on these brass pieces, look at, look at that really rough cut there. But it's such a nice, heavy brass piece, but you know, the, the finish is, is pretty awful. And, here, and here's another example. This flange, not only is it bolted together and, and thus located with these two bolts, but it also has these two dowel pins for no real apparent reason. I don't think the positioning of this piece to this piece is so important that you needed dowel pins because you know this this flange doesn't have dowel pins it's just two bolts and on top of that there's a female pocket and a male boss on these two flanges that further locate everything and that's just excessive as far as I'm concerned um, so I don't know why Rustin would have went through the trouble and the expense of machining this feature, that feature, and these two dowel pin holes just to bolt an air flange together. So maybe somebody can chime in. Anyway, let's keep tearing this down. And here's the air admission valve after it's all taken apart. Again, there's, there's that very, very soft spring, more like a return spring rather than a valve spring. And then the little spring washer and a, a nut. It's got a hole in it for a cotter pin. I think a finishing nail was in there before, actually. Very long valve. And this valve has uh, an interesting 
guide on it. It's made out of brass or bronze. And that's because the thing is so long and the only um, bore that is guiding this valve is up top here. You can see because it's shiny. And if only that part was guiding it, the valve would flop around too much. So there's this extra guide here at the bottom. This seat actually looks pretty good, but I'm going to have both seats and both valves ground and cut. So, especially this one I feel is pretty important since this is going to be seeing the uh, combustion chamber pressure and ignition and everything. And I'll sandblast it and get it all back together. So that about covers it for the moment. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button if you enjoyed this, and then you can stay up to date with our progress at the farm and the progress on this engine. Make sure to leave a comment down below if you have any uh, insight or information about this engine. I would greatly appreciate it. So thanks for watching everybody, and keep an eye out for the next part.